Hi everyone, this is Ashwin here. In this video, we are going to see about dogs vs cat image classification. So this is a basic uh, deep learning project that uh, everyone uh, uses. So in this project, I am going to implement a convolutional neural network. So that is uh, CNN. This is like a popular neural network that will be used for uh, image classification. So I am going to use the data set dogs vs cats. So in this data set, the training archive contains 25,000 images of dogs and cats images. So we have to train your algorithm on these files to predict the labels. That is whether it is a dog or a cat. So we have to represent dog as one and cat as zero. And we have to download the data set. Before that, I'm using a Google Colab uh, cloud environment. You can also use uh, your normal local environment that is your uh, normal local machine but you have to install some uh, tensorflow keras uh, these models you have to install but if you have only uh, cpu in your hardware means it won't be sufficient for training so here if you go into the runtime and change runtime type and uh, change the hardware accelerator from none to gpu so after that save it so I already done it for this notebook. So in Colab, you can able to use the GPU unit. So it will be 10x faster than the CPU. If you have GPU in your local machine means you can able to install the modules accordingly. But there are uh, several steps you have to do and it can only support NVIDIA graphic cards. So make sure to remember these things. First, we will uh, download the data set. So I'll just create a text download data set so i am going to directly uh, use google to get the download link and we can able to use it directly here so w get and you have to paste the link here so now let's go to the tab now in the google dogs versus cat data set download and here you can also download it in Kaggle. So you can able to download it uh, for the local environment and upload it in Colab. So to get the direct link, I'm going to use Microsoft. And here, if you click on the download means, it will show you the download link here. So just copy this URL. You can also right click this and uh, copy the link address if you want. Close this one. Let's paste it, run this. As you can able to see, it's uh, quickly downloaded the data. We have around uh, 786 MB. So this is the zip file. Now we need to unzip the data. So unzip the data set. Now, again, unzip that zip file run this once now it's extracting all the images now it has extracted all the images if you go to the folder so these things we are having a readme the zip file this pet images is our uh, training data set so if you go into that if you go into dog means it will uh, show you all the images it has in dog so here uh, these are all the images that uh, represents this dog and the other folder will contain the other class that is cat so if you are uh, downloading it from other websites means it will uh, give you a different data uh, the folder structure may be different but you can able to handle it so what I am going to do is convert uh, this uh, path into a data frame. That is the input uh, file path and the output as uh, this folder name uh, that is cat or dog. We can able to give some number. So dog is one and cat is zero like that. We can able to create the data frame and using that data frame, we can able to load the data directly. Now we have got the data. So now uh, let's import the modules. So import modules. 
we will import the basic modules and uh, we can able to import modules whenever we need later on so for the basic modules import pandas as pd import numpy as np import matplotlib dot pyplot as plot it's already suggesting so import warnings and for loading the image and for visualization we have to import on one more module from keras dot preprocessing preprocessing dot image import load image should suggest yeah load image so in the warnings we have to ignore the warnings warnings dot filter warnings we will ignore all of them i think for now uh, it is enough if we want more means we can able to import later now we have imported the modules let's create a data frame currently we don't have uh, any data frame create data frame for input and output because uh, this is important this will ease our uh, process mostly in contest you will be having the data frame but for this data set and this is like a basic one that's why they don't have the data frame so we will just create it quickly so now i'm going to create two list that will be input path equals a list and label as another list so here i am going to store the path of our data that is the image path and the corresponding label if it's dog means i will say it as a one if it's cat means i will just say it as zero now so to access the files we have to import one more module that is import os let's run it now now we can able to do it now let's iterate those directories and add the path in this list and after that we will convert these list into a data frame so let's do that now for class in os dot list there so we have to list the directory that will be pet images so that is pet images so it will iterate the directory we have two classes right so this class will have two inputs so this class variable contains two values that will be cat and dog so after that we will iterate each folder again for path in os dot list there pet images inside the pet images we are having the class so this will iterate this folder so this path will have the individual uh, files of that particular class now we will add the inputs and the outputs so if class equals so we have a dog and cat right let's see it so these are the classes if class is cat means i will say label dot append 0 else label dot append 1 so after appending the label we will append the input path so for that input path okay input path dot append now we have to concatenate these directories so what we can able to use is os dot path dot join so what are the things we have pet images comma the class class 
and the path that is the image name so it will append it here so this will do our entire process after this we will just print only one data to see whether it is uh, working perfectly fine or not so we can able to adjust later on so i'm going to display only the first row if it's correct means we will create a data frame and uh, use this inputs to the data frame let's run it now okay before running this cell we have to track the progress right so what we can able to use is import tqdm so this module will be helpful to track the loading time so here whichever has the higher amount of data that will be in this loop so i am going to add tqdm tqdm of this path so it will give you a progress bar let's see it now okay this is a actual class name maybe i will say class name and i will replace everything so it's better understandable by using a clear name next so i guess it's not supported uh, for this type of format maybe uh, we can able to use this later on okay it's not working here so i'll just remove this and see whether it is working properly or not okay i think it has loaded all the data so we have the pet image and the class label so this is dog and the label is one maybe if we do it for any other uh, index so let's check it out let's say 10 and this is also 10 so it's giving different value let's also see what is the total length of the data so len of label in total we have uh, 25002 and that will be same for the input path also so let's double check it before proceeding okay we have uh, all the data we have need so let's create a data frame quickly so df equals pd dot data frame and in the data frame df of input path equals input path and df of label or label equals label or we can call it as images so that will be easier for us finally we will display the head okay let's run this now so we have a proper data frame for us so all contains everything so before uh, proceeding further we will just shuffle the data so it will be easier for us to shuffle df equals df dot sample frac equals one so it will return all the rows and reset okay it's not suggesting so reset index let's run it again so it's showing index also drop equals true now let's run it now now we have shuffled the data set so you can able to see we have mixed columns so if we didn't shuffle means it will uh, show all the data in an arranged manner so while training anyway we will shuffle the data but this is somewhat much better so we have got the data frame and using this data frame we can able to load the images directly so before proceeding to loading some images we need to visualize the image what is actually inside the image so we have to see that so for that i am going to use exploratory data analysis so i'm going to display both the images that is cat and dog in a matrix like layer 
So exploratory data analysis. Okay, now let's uh, build up the graph. Before that, we will just set the graph size. Plot dot figure, fix size. So that will be 25 comma 25. So this block to display grid of images. Now after that, so we need to filter out the files for uh, dog. First we will do it for dog and then we will do it for cat. So for now, let's use a temp equals df of again df of label so dog will be one so we have got the label and we will get the images alone so images so this will uh, get all the images that is related to dog so that will be stored in temp and we have to import one more module so I'll just import it on the top. That will be import random. Now we can able to randomly select some of the images in the temp. So let's say start equals random dot randint. Here I will specify the range that will be len of temp, how many files were there for the dog. Now we will get only uh, first 25 uh, files. So I am going to display a 5 bar 5 grid. So for that, files equals temp of start colon start plus 25. So it will get all the uh, first uh, 25 images and after that we will do our plotting. So for index comma file in enumerate enumerate files we have to create a subplot. So plot dot subplot phi comma 5 comma index plus one so we have to do the index in a one based indexing and after that we will load the image image equals load image that we have imported earlier we have to set the path so this files will contain the path directly so i'll just give file so that is this file and after loading the image, we will just convert it into an array. So that will be image equals np dot array image. Even the Keras has a module to convert image to array. The, that is the name of the module. You can also use that. Now plot dot I am show image plot dot title. I'll say dogs. So currently we are displaying dogs. Now plot dot axis will be off. So it will sh it won't show any kind of axis like x axis and y axis. Let's run this now. Hope this will work. So it's taking some time to run. Yes. We have got our images. So these are the dogs we have. So all the different types of dogs we can able to see here. Some humans is also there in the background holding the dog. And we have got different kind of images. That is uh, here uh, we can able to see the body. Here we can able to see the face. Based on this we have to classify whether this image is a dog or a cat. So that is clear for us now. Let's do this for the cats also. Uh, 
did I close it? Yeah. It's a bigger image, that's why. So we can able to see it clearly. That's enough for us. Now here, we will change it as zero and this will be cats. Let's run this. Okay, I think for only one image, it's not uh, showing anything. Maybe some file was uh, there. Cannot identify image file. Maybe let's run it again. Now it didn't show any errors. Okay, as you can able to see, they have a different uh, saturation of the images and the quality is also different. And uh, see here also some humans were there and there are uh, different kinds of uh, photos. So here uh, the face is on the left side and whole body is there in the center and here the whole face is there. So based on this, we have to classify the image. So we will do some uh, augmentation also. Okay, I think that is for uh, displaying of images and we also see what is the number of classes. So for that, I'll just quickly import uh, Seaborn so we can able to see it. Let's create some codes so it will be easy for us. Import Seaborn as SNS, SNS dot count plot DF of label. So it has the equal number of images that is 12,500 and 12,500. Uh, both are having a equal uh, distribution of both the classes. So we don't have to rebalance the class or any kind of thing. So this is completely uh, having equal distribution. So we can able to move on to the next step. So that will be uh, loading the images. So we have to create some generators. So let's create the text. Create data generator for the images. There are uh, various ways to load the images and train it to the model. So usually what we do is in the earlier days, uh, we will load all the images into the RAM. That is, we will convert all the images into a NumPy array and we will use that NumPy array directly. So for now, we are going to directly read the images from the disk itself while uh, doing the training of the model. So it will read the image when it is needed. So it will save a lot of uh, space in RAM. It won't, it won't uh, overflow or it won't cause any much error because if you don't have enough RAM means if you load the data, everything into the RAM means it will crash your entire system. So that's why these data generators are being used in the latest days. So let's create one. So for that, we have to import another module from keras dot preprocessing dot image import image data generator. So here we will uh, create the generator. So train underscore image data generator or we will just call it as train generator so it will be simple for us now image data generator off we have to specify some parameters so the first basic one is here rescale equals equals one dot divided by 255 this is called normalization of images. Usually uh, the image pixel values range from zero to 255. So we are just normalizing the values uh, so that the pixel values will be in the range of zero to one. So it will be easier for the model to train. So that is for this rescaling. I'll just comment it. Normalization of images. So other things will be uh, 
used for augmentation purpose. I guess I will just uh, have a comma. And we can able to rotate the image. So rotation. Okay, I think it's not showing. Rotation range equals 40. Now we can able to shift the width, height. So I'm going to use some basic uh, parameters. So I'll say shear range. Shear range equals 0 0.2. So these are all augmentation parameters. So augmentation means we are just uh, doing some image processing. I will just explain what it does. So zoom range again equals 0 0.2. This values you can able to vary and see which uh, values provides you the best results. So horizontal flip. So it will just flip the image horizontal manner. True. You can also do it for vertical, but it is useless for this image. And fill mode equals nearest. Now, these are all augmentation of images. Augmentation of images. What is the advantage of this? To avoid overfitting. I already told you. If, uh, if you feed all the data to the machine means it will try to learn everything and uh, it won't predict well for the test data. That's why we are uh, regularization, doing regularization. So this is kind of a regularization in deep learning. Let's say rotation range, shear range, zoom range, horizontal flip. So if we go into the image, so if we have this kind of image, just means it will do the horizontal flip. So it will be a mirror, it will produce a mirror image in the next iteration. If it's zoomed means it will zoom the image based on the number we are uh, providing. Shear range means it will just slant, slant the image. Rotation means it will rotate a image like 40 degrees. Like that, it will do some augmentations. So this will definitely help in our uh, training the data. So this is very much important. Right now, we just have the training data. If you have uh, validation data also means you can be able to create a separate generator for that. So this is for only the augmentation. And after that, we have to create another iterator to load the images. So before loading the images, it will uh, do this uh, image processing. So now we will create another one that is train iterator iterator equals train generator so we are using this to iterate the images so if you don't want to do augmentation means you can delete this thing but normalization is must if you are doing for test data means you have to remove all these things you just need to do the normalization of image now let's do it so i'm going to use flow from data frame maybe let's run it once so it will uh, do some suggestions okay i think uh, okay this is fill mode i guess now it's working train generator dot flow from data frame so we have the directory we can also use directory as it is like you have to give the directory name pet images based on this folder see it can able to directly get the output classes so that's how it works but most of the data will be in data frame that's why i just uh, created a data frame for this so flow from data frame we will give the data frame that is df so we have all the parameters here we have to give x column and y column let's give that x call equals that will be images and y call equals that will be label label and target size target size so it can be in any resolution so I'm going to just uh, convert into 128 cross 128. If it's in power of twos means it will be much better. So I'm going to use a small 
resolution because uh, we are just doing it as a practice if you want to get some higher accuracy means you can able to increase the size to 256 that will be enough or else you can be able to go for 299 also it depends on your analysis now after that we have batch size so i think we have a bigger gpu i'll just say 512 if you don't have a bigger machine or a bigger graphic card means just uh, stick to some 64 or 128 that will be enough and lastly class mode class mode so we have binary if you have multiple classes means you have to set it as category maybe i think uh, we will just uh, do it in line by line so we can able to see it clearly and uh, yeah that's it for us think that will be good let's run it it's showing something if class mode equals binary y call label values must be string maybe uh, maybe we can able to convert the numbers into string where was where we used it i think we have used numbers here i have just uh, loaded the data again so this is the values we are having let's see to change this we will just convert it as df of label label equals df dot or df of label dot as type that will be str that is string let's run this so we have converted the labels into string we'll see whether it is working so found 25,000 validated image file names belonging to two classes i think while loading uh, maybe some additional files were there in that particular folder it may happen so it just avoided uh, that file because it's not a proper uh, format so it's good for us so we have 25,000 validated image file names. So you can able to do this thing in order to convert uh, these labels. Now, after creating the data generator for the images, let's build our model. So model creation, model creation. So here we have to import a few modules so here we have to import few modules so that will be from keras dot layers import so or else we will import it before from keras import sequential yeah it's there now in the layers we have to import few layers that will be con 2d and then max pull 2d after that flatten after that dense so these are the layers we are going to use you can also use dropout if you didn't use this uh, augmentation techniques if you didn't use any of the augmentation techniques means it's better to use a dropout layer in between now we have imported all the necessary modules we need let's create our model so there are multiple ways to create the model too so let's do it in a different way because in the last time i have uh, used uh, a different way that is uh, model equals sequential sequential i'll just uh, after that model dot add like that i will just add each layer so apart from that you can also add it like a list so it is also possible so here i'll just add each layer inside the sequential what sequential means means it will arrange the layers in a sequential manner and after that it will pass each layer now let's create con 2d I think it's not suggesting the parameters. Let's comment it once and run it. 
now all the modules are imported let's do it now 2d now it's suggesting everything we have to uh, mention the number of uh, units for this particular layer that is hidden units so i'll say 16 and the kernel size will be 3 comma 3 i'm just building a standard uh, cnn neural network and activation equals relu this is a popular activation for the image classification input shape input underscore shape equals so we have a three dimensional images so what resolution we have mentioned is 128 128 comma 3 this 3 indicates the rgb so that's why we have three channels if you have grayscale means it will be one so be sure to remember this so this is our first layer in the second layer after convolution we will initialize max pool so that will be max pool 2d off again we have to set the kernel size 2 comma 2 after this again convolutional layer so we will repeat this layer again and again so you can also build a bigger network so i'm just going with a smaller one so 32 units 3 comma 3 activation again equals relu now in these layers you don't have to specify the input shape only for the first layer we need to specify the input shape after that it will automatically pass the inputs to the other layers so comma and comma we will just repeat this max pull again so here we will create another layer like this this is like a combination so for each thing it will have this and it will increase the number of units also so to 64 progressively we are increasing the number of uh, units and we have the max pull finally we will just flatten the layer so far we are having a two dimensional matrix like structure that's why it is 2d so if you use flatten so flatten it will get the output and convert it into a single dimensional uh, array so it will ease our process so after that dense layer dense layer will have 512 so we will be having some number of inputs in flatten so we are just uh, reducing the input now so to 512 and here also we will have the activation as relu finally we have the final output that will be dense of one and activation will be sigmoid so we are doing a binary classification that's why i'm just using sigmoid if it's a other classification means we have to use some other activation we have softmax and other activations are possible if it's multi-class means you have to use softmax based on the output columns so this is our model so we have built a three convolution layer followed by a flattened layer and the two dense layers so this is our simple model now we have to compile let's compile model dot compile maybe we will just do it in a separate line so it will be clear for us model dot compile now optimizer we have to specify the optimizer loss function everywhere it will be there okay it's not showing us did we run this let's run this once okay we have missed a comma here run it again now yeah it's done let's see whether it is showing optimizer is adam if you don't know anything about optimizer means make sure you use adam if you don't know anything about it because this is like a it will automatically uh, use corresponding learning rate and it will automatically improve your model that's the objective of adam so if you use uh, there are other uh, optimizers also that is sjd rms prop 
but for that we have to specify some parameters we will see that in the later video now loss will be binary cross entropy so this is a binary classification after that matrix matrix equals accuracy so we are using accuracy as the matrix now model dot summary so this will give you a diagram like structure so this is our uh, model so each time you can able to see it so the input shape or uh, changing and these are the number of parameters we have finally in the dense layer we are having uh, this many uh, parameters and we are gradually reduced it now let's do the training we will create variable to key to just uh, plot some graphs later or else you can also go to directly to model.fit so this will be a complete project if we include all the components we can able to think of now train iterator train iterator comma epochs that is the number of iterations equals 50 and validation split equals we will split 20 percent of data and we also have some steps i will just uh, make it as a default one so we have validation steps and uh, steps per epoch i am just uh, using it as default one let's run it whether it is working fine or not showing some error okay this validation split is uh, only useful for the numpy array so we can't able to use the validation split i think we have to use uh, validation iterator so for that we will uh, use one more thing so that will be validation data validation data will be validation or we will say val iterator so we didn't create it yet because it didn't work as we expected so what we can able to do is while creating this we will split the input here instead of uh, df we will just split the input quickly so input split so from sklearn dot model selection import train test split now here train test equals train test split we usually have four variables if you just need a uh, the data frame as a whole you can able to do this so i'll just pass df test size equals 20 percent that is 0.2 and random state equals 42 and we also don't need anything apart from this okay we also use stratify but I don't think it will work here. Let's run this. Now let's check it whether it's good. Train.head, we have a separate data frame for this. Yes. And for test, we have a separate data frame. Now let's use it here for train iterator. We will create another thing as validation iterator so i think for validation uh, what we can able to do is create a normal generator so i'll say val generator equals image data generator of rescale that will be 1.255 so i'm not doing any kind of augmentations for validation 
uh, this we can able to consider that as a test data. So this is the generator now here. We will use the same thing. So instead of train, we will use val. And here we will use test data. And here we will use validation generator. Okay, that's good for us. Let's run this. We have got the generator. So we have uh, so 20,000 samples for training and 5,000 sample for testing. So that's good for us. Let's run the model now. I think that will be enough. It's showing unknown loss function binary cross entropy. I think uh, we would have made some here. The spellings are correct. Maybe they would have changed it like this. Let's run it. Let's run it again. Yes, it's working now. I think they have updated a few parameters sometimes. Usually this will happen. So it's not showing any progress uh, so far. I think uh, usually it will give you some uh, progress tab. So I think we have to set some parameter. Let's wait for a single epoch. Yeah, now it's showing some progress tab here. So I think it will take a longer time uh, to train our model. So we have just uh, put it as uh, 50. That is 50 iterations. So it will uh, definitely take a longer time to train. Okay. So while running the model, I have faced this error. I think before that also we have uh, seen the length is somewhat odd. That is 25,002. I guess it's because of uh, some DB file was there. So we have to uh, remove that. So what we can able to do is we will just delete that particular row here itself. Delete DB files, DB files. So I have got the code. You can able to check. See? these two files are there. So if you don't have these files, you can able to delete it directly if you found it or else we will just delete it manually. So what we can able to do is will be just filter out these things. So df of maybe df equals df of again df of images. So here we need to provide uh, some conditions that is okay maybe we will just print it in a separate cell print it here not equals this file And in the next row, this is not much efficient, but we will just do it quickly because we already uh, took a lot of time. So the same thing in for cat. Now, finally, we will just say length of df. Now we have 25. So here uh, we are facing some error as you can able to see here in fill image dot open iobytes dot f dot read so it can able to open uh, some particular images maybe we need to drop those uh, particular rows i think because of that uh, we are facing this issue let's quickly drop this uh, thing okay for that we will go to the top so here we already uh, deleted this uh, thumbs.db values. 
here let's add another code so import fill and what I'm going to do is for image in pf of images I'm going to do is image equals fill dot open image so if it shows some error I will just make a list and store that image name so what I am going to do is here I am say try if it works fine means ok or else accept as e I will say l dot append image and finally I will just display the image so let's run this okay the syntax is wrong I'll just say accept okay the syntax is different so that will be fill dot image dot open yeah let's run this now so these two images are corrupted that's why we are uh, facing so, so many issues so let's uh, do this also here in the delete db I'll just copy this thing and paste it but the data should be working properly I don't know why this images is not uh, getting loading so I'll just drop these rows so now let's run this thing and we have deleted the files let's quickly uh, run all the other thing so that will be here here in the input split here and in the generator okay let's run this thing and model model summary and finally the training So it will definitely take a longer time. So I'm just gonna see how it's uh, working now. So for each epoch, it will take around uh, two minutes. So I'll just going to run this one, uh, 10 epochs only. I, I'm not going to go for some visualizations because uh, we need at least like uh, 50 epochs to do the visualization so i'm going to just see what is the loss and what is the validation accuracy and we can able to get some inference on top of that we are already using some augmentation techniques that's why it's getting uh, so much time if you don't have a sufficient hardware means it will definitely take a longer time uh, to train everything so we will just wait for a while if you want means you can able to run the same thing again so it will uh, train the model again but for now yeah we will just uh, skip forward a few minutes and uh, after that we we can uh, conclude our project so we have uh, reached uh, almost the end of our training so in the meantime we will just uh, create the visualization just to save our time so visualization of results now let's plot it so all the things all the calculation of loss accuracy validation loss and accuracy will be stored in the history variable so we are going to use that so accuracy equals history dot history of accuracy so this will be the training accuracy and the same for validation equals same history dot history instead of uh, normal accuracy we will just change it as val accuracy so val underscore accuracy now after that we need to have the x-axis that will be epochs equals len of accuracy so that will be the list so here it is like 10 
now let's do the plotting so plot dot plot so epox that will be the x-axis we have uh, two values so first we will plot the training accuracy and the color will be b we can also set the label equals training accuracy and we will do the same before that this is yes and this is training accuracy and for validation we will call it as val accuracy here we will change the color to something else that is red and here this will be validation accuracy so validation accuracy now after that we will use title title can be um, training and validation accuracy or we can also call it as accuracy graph accuracy graph now we have to finish few things that is legend so this will show you the color and the corresponding uh, label finally we will just use figure plot dot figure and this is for accuracy graphs and again we will use another graph for the loss so here instead of a figure we will just use show show and here this will be loss graph and this can be training loss and uh, validation loss 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 and here we have to create some variables like we have did before so we will say loss equals history dot history of loss and again val loss equals the same instead of loss we will call it as validation loss and we will use the same variables here so this will be blue and this will be red and uh, title will be loss graph legend is also there and i think that will be enough for us we can able to print the graph let's wait for the training to complete we just have like nine seconds remaining so uh, during the training you can able to observe this is training accuracy this is training loss and the validation accuracy and validation loss so this is gradually increasing even in the training and the validation we can able to see a performance improvement very uh, much even for 10 epochs so if we go for a 50 epochs means it will definitely exceed our expectation that is i am expecting around 90 uh, percent accuracy for this uh, basic uh, cnn model last time i have used some transfer learning and uh, a bigger model to get around 99 percent accuracy that's the maximum even some people have got 100 percent accuracy because of uh, training with uh, larger gpu and longer amount of time so you can able to see the values it's gradually increased up to 77 and here also validation accuracy from 62 to 77 the maximum we have got is around 78 so yeah this is our good score even for like 10 iterations it's uh, very good now let's plot the graph okay it's showing some error i guess okay here uh, i forgot to access the range so this is also kind of a list so i'm just plotting it in a graph so it will have zero to if it's 10 values means it will be having zero to nine values that's how it will work so yeah we have got the accuracy graph and the loss graph so as you can able to see this is the training curve and the validation we have reached around uh, 78 uh, even for uh, 10 the 10 epochs so the x-axis will be the epochs and the y-axis will be the accuracy in this graph and in the loss graph it's gradually decreasing and the training and the test validation loss also something here in the seventh epoch it just spiked up and it just uh, keeps on going down so 
I guess in the sixth epoch itself, uh, we have got our, gotten our higher accuracy. If the loss is more minimum means, we will be getting higher uh, accuracy. So we have got around 78.6. That is our uh, maximum accuracy for 10 epochs. So you can able to run it for 50 epochs if you have time. So you can able to reach at least uh, more than 90%. That's what I'm expecting. So you can able to try that and uh, show your results as a screenshot in the comment or you can able to post it as a comment. And that's it guys. So in this uh, tutorial, we have uh, done various things like uh, exploratory data, data analysis and uh, we have done augmentation, normalization of images and using the data generator. And we also filtered some values uh, because of data corruption because this will definitely happen in uh, most of the projects. So you can able to uh, maybe if the video is uh, gone to south, still it will give you some practical uh, experience because uh, you don't uh, face these errors uh, in most of the normal projects. So when you go for some contest means it will definitely occur uh, many times. So it will be a definitely useful experience. So I will include all the things in the video. And that's it guys. This is our uh, dogs versus cats image classification using CNN. If you have any other approach and I also mentioned about uh, there are bigger models and uh, transfer learning is there. We can able to implement various things in a future project with a different data set. If you have any other approach apart from this means please leave a comment below. It will be very useful for others. And yes, if you like this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe the channel for future videos. See you guys in the next video.